Hey everyone, it's Chris here back again for Friendly Frenzy Games. I'm gonna walk through another escape room and escape simulator. The next one in the Edgewood Mansion series of rooms is called The Attic. As always, if you find this video helps you at all, give us a like and consider subscribing to Friendly Frenzy Games for more long and short guides just like this one. So to start in the attic room, the simplest puzzle is probably to start with the dollhouse here. You can see that we've got a combination here with kind of a house picture on it and that just closely resembles the dollhouse um, above it here. So what we're going to want to do is pick it up and inspect it. And what we're looking for, as you can see on the um, combination lock here, they almost have it split into levels. So the number from the top level is going to give us our top lock. Um, number, the middle is going to give us our middle number, and then obviously the bottom is going to give us our last number. So what we want to do with this dollhouse is just count the number of lights on uh, on each level of the house here. So I always just kind of use the kind of head-on shot of this dollhouse as my starting point. So with this one, we'll use one light here on the top and circle it around. We have two lights here, so our first number is two. Pull up the dollhouse again and we'll tackle the middle floor now. So we have one light, two light, three, four, five, six, and seven. So our middle number is seven. And we will get the last number here. So we have two, we have three. That one's kind of hard to see, so you gotta make sure you spin it. But we have three on the front, four, five, and five is our last number here. So the combination for the dollhouse lock is 275. With that, I'm just gonna get rid of this. Um, with that, we have these top drawers open now. We have a reel, and I should have mentioned at the beginning, what we're trying to do, obviously we can see our escape door here, is we have um, an antique kind of movie player that we have to put back together. So we're looking for, similar to the decompression chamber where we're looking to outfit the suit, we're trying to find pieces now that are going to help us put this back together. So we have one of the reels. We can get, remove this broken light bulb because it is another piece that we're going to be looking for. You can see here, it looks like we're looking for another reel, a light bulb, and um, the actual lens. And then this puzzle here also is going to raise the projector and it's going to focus the beam on this, which is going to open the door there. So. That puzzle is out of the way. We can open this drawer here and we can see that we have some sort of lock box with a rabbit on it and there's a number. Uh, what do we have here? 5937. So that'll come in handy, but we don't need that necessarily just yet. Um, there's a token in here, but we'll save that for later. Otherwise, there's nothing else of importance in that dresser. What we can focus on now is just really quickly behind us, there's a table with a typewriter. There's also a padlock um, here that's kind of locking one of these dresser drawers. So to find that key is actually just on the flip side of this mirror on that same dresser. So you'll wanna pick it up, just click the mirror itself. It flips over and reveals the key. We can now use that key on this padlock here. So that opens that. We can open this drawer and find the other reel and slap that on there just see if there's anything in this drawer. So we also have papers. This doesn't need to be unlocked. It was just the left drawer that's unlocked with the um, key there. But what we want the papers for is to put into the typewriter. So with this lockbox puzzle, lockbox puzzle, sorry, what we're gonna wanna do is you can see there's a rabbit on the typewriter here itself, which matches the same one that's on the top of the lockbox here. So you can see there's a four number um, digit on the top of the lockbox here. Obviously on the typewriter we have digits as well. What you wanna do is as soon as you hit, you, we're gonna wanna put the 5937 into the typewriter. You can see by clicking five, it spits out a number two. So what it's doing is when you put the lock combination that's written on top of the lock box into the typewriter, it's actually decoding into what the real combination is gonna be. So we have our five, which translates into two. We'll put our nine in, we'll put our three in, and we'll put our seven in. So our actual combination for that lock box is two, four, eight, one. So we can go ahead, pick this up and put it in. Obviously you wanna find number one for where the actual combination starts. 
So we'll go ahead, we'll put in our two, put in our four in the second spot, put our eight in the third spot, and put one in the fourth spot, and that opens. And now you can see we have our lens here. I'm just gonna toss this lockbox out now that we're done with it. So we have our lens, we can go ahead and put that in. So we've got about half, our, half of our um, final puzzle done. There's a note on the floor here, and this is gonna lead us to our next puzzle. So this chest in the middle of the room here, or I guess the corner of the room, there's a jack box, so we know that this note that we find on the floor is going to be for um, that combination. So in going through, it's mentioning about a jack box um, with hearts on it that it always pops first. So we know our first number is going to correlate to the heart jack in the box. We can see that there's a yellow one here. We can go ahead and pick that jack in the box up. There is a purple one in the corner of the room. It has a star on it, so still doesn't have the hearts. The heart shaped um, jack-in-the-box is actually just in this box of toys here so corresponding to the note we know this number is going to be the first in the law combination what you want to do to figure out what that number is is spin it and count the number of spins it takes to pop the jack-in-the-box so there's one full spin there's two full, full spins so we know obviously with the jack-in-the-box popping out at two our first number in this sequence is two going back to the note um, we find Daniels, it always pops after four turns. So the second in uh, the second number in this combination, we can test to find out which one um, Jax is, or Daniels is, sorry, whichever one pops four times. So one, two, three, four. So we know the purple one here is Daniels um, toy. Just to confirm that it does pop on the fourth and it is our second number, we can go ahead and plug four in. So now we know that three, um, the yellow jack in the box with kind of like the star shaped on it is gonna be our last one. And it just lines up with everything in the note here saying that lastly we found mine and it is the longest to pop up. So to get the third number in our combination, we just wanna count how many times it takes for this jack in the box to pop so we can go ahead and count. Um, full spins here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know the last number in our combination is six here. So that unlocks that chest. We don't need that book. We just want to pop this open. And what this is going to do is give us our last um, pieces for the last puzzle. So you can see there's a couple of different toys in here, but there's only one that's indicated by the key up in the um, up in the top there so we only need the horse from this puzzle the other three pieces that we need actually I guess two pieces are in this box here so there's a plain toy and a doll toy and then the last toy that we need for this puzzle is just in the corner of the room and it's the dog toy so these um, four toys are gonna go into this puzzle here we just need to figure out wh whose toy is what and to get that, there's a picture in the corner of the room here, and you can see. So it looks like there's a young boy, there's a father-looking figure, a mother-looking figure, and a young daughter. Flipping it over, you can confirm Daniel and Lizzie with mom and dad. So we know that Daniel and Lizzie are the two children. So we would assume that this is Daniel, this is Lizzie, and then obviously your mom and dad. How you get um, the toy puzzle solution is just by looking at this. So we know we have a, a horse toy. The horse, Daniel's on a horse, obviously. The dad looks like he's got some sort of pilot aviation headgear on, so we can put, we can likely put the toy plane with him. So let's go ahead and plug those two in. As we said before, Daniel is on a horse, so we can go ahead and plug that in. And then Edward, we can assume is the dad. Because of his aviation headgear, we can go ahead and assimilate him to the um, plane there. So now we have the two female figures. The mom is behind a dog. So we can assume that because of this picture, we can put the dog toy with Victoria, which would leave the doll with Lizzie. Once we go ahead and put that in, it raises the projector. So now everything's in line. The only thing that we need now is to replace this light bulb. And to do that, there is a set of instructions just in this envelope on the typewriter desk. Pick the envelope up and open it. 
And we're going to want to use these instructions on the globe in the middle of the room here. So you can see there's a couple of different lights and ultimately this is going to open and give us our light bulb. So what we want to do first is they give us kind of the order that we need to hit the lights to be able to solve this puzzle. So first um, they saw China, so we can go ahead and hit China. From there they took a uh, plane and went to the USA. So we can go across to the right here and hit USA. Then they went south and saw the rainforest. So it doesn't give a specific location, but we know it's south. Um, the only location that's not actually written word for word on this globe is Brazil, but we know or can deduce anyways that rainforests are here just based on the other locations. So we know there is a light in Africa, which is where they went next. And then they go up to England. So hit England. The globe will open and we get our light bulb and we can plug it into the projector here. The only thing that you need to do now to make sure that you complete the room is hit the play button. So as soon as you hit the play button, the light, like I said, is focused on this sensor here and it'll open up the elevator door and we've completed the room. So as mentioned at the beginning of this video, your support truly does go a long way. If you've made it this far, we hope that you like what you've seen. Drop a comment, let us know if this video helped you. Give us a like and subscribe to Friendly Friends of Games for more guides, tips and tricks.